Welcome back to the Comic Lounge. My name is Ryan, and with me today, I have another dope indie creator with me. I have Rocco Jerome, one of the masterminds behind the fabled Image Grand Design. Everybody's talking about it online. I work at a shop. Somebody called the shop asking if we had the book. So oh, wow. That's pretty crazy in and of itself. You know what I mean? Like I, I, I was talking to another creator that was in the book too. I told him that and I'm like, it just kind of blew me away. Cause it's like, how, why? Like, why are you calling a comic book store? You know, but I mean, it's the power of the book. I think it's the excitement surrounding the book. So really yeah. glad to have you here. Be able to Absolutely. kind of pick your brain and talk about the project, dude. Yeah, thanks so much. I'm, I'm really excited to get to do this. I've done a series of podcasts right. uh, with all the different people who worked on design and uh, I haven't been able to talk to anybody where we just talk about my own perspective. So thank you for this. I really appreciate it. Oh, yeah, man. I, I mean, I think I reached out to you before the book even dropped. You did. That's true. And, uh, yeah. and, I, and, you know, like, I didn't, I didn't want to, like, I wanted to kind of, like, to talk about, I also didn't know how you guys were releasing it. So, like, my, my in, initial thing was, like, oh, I want to help get the word out. But then I realized, like, you can't really... You're not yeah. really, that's not what we're trying to do here with the project. So I'm like, okay, I'll just wait. I'll give it some time. You know, the book's out. I'm like, okay, let me reach out. So yeah, l let's just start off of the bat. Let's tell me a little bit about yourself. Everybody listening and watching, like, was this your first comic book work? Like, how did you first get into comics? What started your love for it? Let's, let's just, uh, yeah. Talk that real um, quick. yeah. First time working in comics after loving comics my entire life. Okay. Uh, I'm a writer by vocation as well as disposition. I had written things about comics that had been published. I'd never written any comics that had been published uh, since I was a kid. I was in the, uh, the comic book club at my middle school in seventh grade. And uh, the deal with that was that the wife of Don Rosa, the fabled uh, Uncle Scrooge, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Donald Duck creator, uh, his wife was a teacher at that school. And I was what? thinking about that. I didn't even thought about that in decades. I thought about it last night. It's like, oh, wow, I've made a comic once before when I was 12. <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. And yeah. not since. It, it was, it's sort of one of those things where I always kind of, it was something that I didn't feel like I could really do, right? Because I can draw, but not real well. I have like a cartooning. I can draw faces and heads sort of like a C.C. Beck sort of thing. So to me, it was always like, how am I ever going to convince an artist that they need to draw something that I wrote? You know, you always hear that old Wally Wood thing, you know, comics will break your heart, kid. You know, don't don't get into the business. Just appreciate them from afar. Mm -hmm. So as far as this image grand design thing goes, sort of just came into it by accident, like a lot of us did. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, pretty, pretty crazy. How it came yeah, sure. it is. It's really quite a ride. I'll have to excuse me. My cat's got the zoomies. So that's the, the background uh, <laughs> banging around. Uh, there's there's nobody tied up here or anything. So how I got involved in Image Grand Design, I was on the Cartoonist Kayfabe Ringside Seats Facebook group. And I would imagine that a lot of the people that are watching this either are as well or they're familiar with that. Or uh, if they're not familiar with that and they love comics, I would recommend it. It's a real, uh, fantastic sort of a collective of people who are, ha have a sort of a similar idea about what they love about comic books. This was maybe like day three of the pandemic, the point where everything was shut down and we were all sort of trying yep. to figure out what life was. Got out of bed that day, felt weird, you know, early on thinking about wearing masks in public thinking about <laughs> diseases spreading, thinking about my loved ones, wondering how we were going to all make it through this thing. And I got on that group and there was a Zoom chat thing that was up, like an invitation to Zoom. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, wow. I'd never even Zoomed before. I hadn't even heard of Zoom. It yeah, was I didn't a really big it. day. Yeah, I didn't right? hear about Zoom either until the pandemic. Yeah. So yeah, Zoom is an invention of the pandemic, as far as I'm concerned. Clicked it, met Craig CK, who you had on your show. I love Craig. Yeah, same here. For wrestling 
fans who are into the backstage parlance of professional wrestling. Craig CK is like a locker room leader, right? He's like the undertaker type guy <laughs> behind the scenes. Like he's the tough guy who everybody respects, everybody loves, and everything he says carries weight. I met him for the first time on the Zoom thing. Mm-hmm. And he was telling me, hey, we're working on this Image Grand Design comic, which I'd heard about, but I, I didn't know what I could do to help. I didn't know if I would even be involved in any capacity. Uh, and he, he also said, Jack Kirby made a Bruce Lee comic book for Image, and I want to draw it, and I need someone to write it. And if you're a writer, maybe we can collaborate. And I was like, wow, I didn't know anything about that. Two of my favorite things in the world are Bruce Lee and Jack Kirby. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I was off to the races. And from that day forward, I didn't think about the awful pandemic and all the terrible things going on outside my window. I thought about Image Grand Design. That's awesome, dude. I mean, yeah. I, it's like I'm hearing this, like, as I've talked to quite a few people now that have been a part of the project, you know, I know Eli, I met Eli because he, when I started working at my at my local comic shop, like he's a customer there. Oh, wow. So that's how we None met. None of us have met in person. Yeah, I mean, and that's what's crazy too, is like a lot of you guys have just only talked or met on Zoom and this is how I I'm think seeing. A few of us have, there's some guys in California who have all. They've, they've I think, yeah, I think Chris Anderson uh, rolled over to Eli's too. I think that's why yeah. I knew that he had the yeah. palette at his house. Cause I was like, what? You got yeah. the books? Like, yeah. and he's yeah. like, and I didn't even ask if I could come. He's like, you can come through. And I was like, all right, cool. So yeah. I went and picked up the book, but yeah. Yeah. yeah so Chris like lives in California as well. And so does Rick. I don't know if anybody's met Rick in person yet. And the Canadian, the, the Canada guys. Right. And Will, Will Hoffnick uh, lives, lives out in uh, Cali as well too. Right. Yeah. He's so, on, yeah. He did stuff on disaster. I don't think he has anything in design. But, right. And then and he's, he's also, also working on another thing. A couple other things, right, which we I've talked about with him. I think I'm going to help him out with some of that stuff. But, yeah, like, you know, I met Eli, and he added me to the group, right? And he told me he was working on this zine. And, like, he loves the Ninja Turtles, and so do I. So he handed me, like, this, like, Viking Ninja Turtle mashup thing that he put together yeah. with some other people. Right. And I was like, dude, this is dope. And then he's like, oh, I'm doing something else. He's like, I know you have a website and like you kind of edit people because you have other writers. Would you want to help? And I'm like, all right. You know, like, and I didn't know about the Kayfabe channel. I, I mean, I've probably said this on other interviews, but so then I started checking out the channel. I, I checked out a couple videos and then I helped him with the Wizards. And I'm like, dude, what is all this stuff? This is so dope. And then the pandemic hit. And then I started, I'm like, I got a lot of time. And I started watching the Kayfabe channel. I went back to the beginning. I watched every fucking video. I was in the group. I was, I was like looking at all the posts. I started buying books that I had never heard of before. And I just fell in love with the community. Not so much the channel, not so much individual comics, but just the overall community of what the Kayfabe Ringside Seats group is. And it's, it's, an, ama- it's an amazing thing. I, I, was, I was talking to Misimo uh, the other day. Yeah, and uh, I, I told him, I said, this f- fucking book is emanating with passion and joy. Like yeah. every time you open the book, it's like you can feel the energy exuding from it. And it's it's insane. And that's why like, I'm like, so glad because I know that you were a huge part in like overseeing a lot of this stuff. I know Eli, you know, helped get, you know, he did the publishing side aspect of it. But you were the editor. Yeah. Right? So that's you right. were like making a cohesive well, the grand design part is more of a cohesive story. Grand disaster is a completely different other animal. But- right. And and so <laughs> all right. <laughs> it's funny because it's it's like when I think about image grand design and me being the editor of it, I almost feel like it's one of those things where it's like it's like a story in which like a guy who was like a police detective who always had problems with the higher ups goes to a small town someplace and like becomes a sheriff, right? Like mm-hmm. being a writer, I've had all sorts of negative relationships with, with editors. Mm-hmm. Like editors are almost like the natural enemy of writers in so many ways. And I've never been an editor myself. And I, it hasn't all been bad. I have to say that in case anybody's listening, like you're not all bad. <laughs> Some of you are though. <laughs> And if you are, you probably know who you are. But 
I always wanted to work with someone at an editor level who would just trust me to do my job and just sort of leave me alone and give me the support that I needed and be an advocate for me, right? Mm -hmm. And that's what I always wanted to do for somebody else. Like to me, being in charge of something, it doesn't mean well, I'm in charge. You're subjugated to me. You have to do what I say. Mm -hmm. To me, it means that the person who is given the responsibility and the trust now has to be an advocate to make the project work and to make sure that the people that are working on the project can do their best work and can can do something they're happy with and that will, uh, in the case of image grand design, make sense for the whole cohesive picture. You know, it was never my intention to like come in and take over or something like that. It was just that we would have these Zoom calls. We would all talk about comic books. And, and this goes back to the group as well. Some of the most quality conversations about comic books you'll ever have in your life <laughs> are with these people. Yeah. It, it's never about like, can Superman beat up the Hulk? It's always about creators and perspectives where that's concerned. And a tremendous lack of any sort of a, a snobbery aspect, more yes. or less, sometimes, but not often. This is a place where Todd McFarlane is as respected as Daniel Klaus, mm -hmm. which was what sort of put the zap on my head with this in the first place. Because I those old image comics didn't really appeal to me all that much when I was a kid, right? What I like yeah. to say is a lot of those comic books look like they were drawn by like a 14 year old kid in the back of a, a, a remedial math class who's doodling on a piece of paper when he should be doing his homework. Mm -hmm. And whether or not you think of that as a good or a bad thing is kind of a matter of perspective. Like I used to not like that about those books. Now it's like punk rock to me. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And a lot of that came, a lot of me getting off my high horse about it came from the group because it's like, hey, you know, there's something to this. Just because it looks like Napoleon Dynamite drew it, that adds to a certain energy that it has, right? In those early days with that, Zoom Collective, the guy who was always on the program is Rick Lopez. Rick Lopez was already drawing on <laughs> notebook paper those panels, and there's a lot of those panels. There's so many cool panels that he drew that were all like straight from the Ed Piscor pitch, like, you know, these guys climbing up a building, these guys shooting each other these you know so it was always like he was doing image grand design right yeah and then other people were like well then what if Raphael shows up and these guys can fight against supreme and it was like that was different from what the image grand design plan was mm -hmm. right i wasn't into image but i was into valiant when i was a kid like when those books were going on, I was like one of those like nebbishy valiant kids during the days of Jim Shooter. Afterwards, I can't really attest too much to the books. But the thing about those those valiant books was that the continuity was airtight. You could pick up an issue of Eternal Warrior and a guy would get his arm cut off at 1030 in the morning on that book. And then the issue of Harbinger you bought the same day, the guy would be getting a metal prosthesis by seven o'clock that afternoon on the same date. And it was always just like written by different people, drawn by different people. Mm -hmm. was, wow, they were able to do that. So to me, a lot of it was applying that to the, the image universe, right? Because that had certainly never been done before where you make it so that it all sort of is cohesive. That to me was the mission statement. And I never wanted to be in a position to tell people, no, you can't do something. No, Raphael can't be there. This is image grand design. You're not allowed to do that. Like, for a lot of reasons, I never wanted to say that because yeah, yeah. it can't be up to me. It's a collective group, right? I was trusted to, to do this. It wasn't something where I had any sort of a, a, a say so. I didn't want that. So it occurred to me, maybe like two weeks in, 
that there needed to be another project, right? And the way that I thought of it is that it's like Grand Theft Auto, if you play the missions and you do the story, <laughs> that's what design is. If you just like steal a cop car and wreak havoc, that's what disaster is, or even like the online mode. I pitched that. The flip book was my idea. I stole it. Well, it wasn't really my idea because I stole it from an old issue of Marvel Age. And other people worked on disaster. And then I just focused solely on working on design with these guys to make sure that it all made cohesive sense. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I think that that was that's the whole point of like grand design is from what Ed and then Tom Shuey did with uh, the Fantastic Four one um, is that you're creating a cohesive continuity when back then it wasn't so much about having a continuity. Like in the early X-Men comics, like it was like a villain of the week kind of type deal, right? It yeah, was never yeah. so like like X-Men needed it more than Fantastic Four. Image, I would say, would definitely be was a perfect thing to do it with because there's no there's no cohesiveness even though these characters all lived in the beginning all lived within the same realm yeah so yeah. and I, I i loved i love that aspect about it from the david brower's cover which is absolute <laughs> fire by the way if Brower's I, was always like the big man on campus because to me it's like I don't think any of the image guys are better than David Brown. No, he he easily you know? could have he easily could have had an image book coming out in the '90s. Could have stood up next to any one of those artists. Yeah, and Browers likes he loves all kinds of comics. Like if you listen to the podcast where I talk to him, like we bonded over our mutual love of Captain Marvel from the '40s. Like it's like like his favorite guy is Mike Allred. Like it's like that dude is is. The way that he draws and like his his whole love of comics is very very broad. Like he's into a lot of different stuff. And it was always funny because on these zooms, he would always sort of like have the camera set up like somewhere else, and he would kind of be like walking around, and he would come in the frame when he would talk. He would do this, and like you know what I like about Image, and then he would disappear completely. <laughs> and it was it was hard to get a read on that guy. For me, it was almost like, before I got to know him, it was almost like kind of like a, a level of pressure because it was like, we want this guy to do something on the book. If he doesn't like what we're doing, we're kind of making a mistake. Like there's, there's something wrong here if he doesn't, mm. he doesn't dig what we're doing here. But uh, it was always a foregone conclusion that he would do the cover. So. Yeah, I mean, I, lo I love his stuff. I love every creator on here really brings a level of excitement in their art, no matter what, what's, I mean, from the lettering to the coloring, everything's like, and you, you really, you guys, everybody played with um, different approaches to their grand designs. Like, yeah, blood is like profiles, right? And then, right, yeah. And that was, I mean, a lot of that was, I didn't want to ever tell anybody what to do with their pages beyond hit whatever storyline beat needed to get hit there. Like, I think about the time that this comes out, I'm going to drop for the public view the sign-up sheet that we had so that you can see what the plot bits were. Because that's that's really interesting to go back and look at. Because it would be like, in this, we need to, in this scene, we need to establish uh, that there's this virus, this alien virus, and they need to get this pill in order to make it so it's not too hot to hold, right? So that mm -hmm. they can do what they need to do. And then the person would go off and draw that. Whatever, you know, I mean, whatever characters they wanted to use, as long as we sort of, the big thing was always, is that character dead yet? That was always kind of like, you can't use him there because that guy's dead. Okay, mm -hmm. <laughs> Yahtzee. You know, we can use, instead of Blood Wolf, we'll put a, a laser blade or whatever. And I mean, I never really had this great affinity for image, right? Which made it easier for me because these characters aren't really sacred cows to me. Like, it's just kind of like, I just let people who loved these characters just work and do their thing and just stayed out of their way, right? Once everything got turned in, there was pages where we needed to sort of like goose the plot a little bit and make sure that it, it all uh, made collective sense. 
and Chris Anderson was really the guy for that. There's there's pages in there that I wrote that he drew and did all the art for. And those are sort of like what nudges the plot along in some places. But for the most part, it's it's cohesive to me, right? Like it's when yeah. I read it, it makes sense. Yeah. I mean, I yeah. like I said, I, I think I've said this to, uh I don't know who I've said it to, but this was my the book I was most excited for going into 2021. Yeah. Like I could not wait for this book more than any other comic book coming out from Marvel, DC, Image, you know, any publisher. And there's a there's a lot of good stuff that's come out. Like even this past week, we had Monsters by Barry Windsor Smith. We oh, had right. we had a new Reckless book from Ed Brubaker, John Phillips. And don't get me wrong, I love those books, but I was so excited because I had no idea what to expect. Yeah, like this was a complete here. mystery. Yeah, well, and that was deliberate too. And that was like we didn't always get along. I mean, like these guys, I love these guys. These guys to me are like brothers to me. And I'll always think of them that way because we were a support group during one of the most challenging times of our lives. Right. Um, but like a lot of the the sort of the, the loggerheads that we came to was that I was very cognizant of like, I don't want spoilers to get out, right? Because people are excited about the book. And it's like, people care what happens in this thing. So it was like, please don't share too much stuff. Don't share these certain things. And like that, that could be kind of tricky to ask people that were very excited about their work to just sort of like hold tight for a while. And of course, there was also always the possibility that some of the, 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 the entities that hold these copyrights could get the wrong idea about what we were doing. So. Yeah, I mean, so far, I haven't seen any anything uh in terms of like negative i think rob Liefeld even commented that looks dope on yeah, he likes page. it so he that likes was... it. eric larson likes it yeah we have confirmation there um the todd father we don't know yeah you know <laughs> i mean the legal I department how... at warner brothers don't know but i mean oh, yeah. like to me i hope that those guys see that this was made out of love and that this can only help anything that they do with their entities, with their IP. Uh, you know, I would hope that these guys would, you know, like even like a Sam Keith would be like, oh, I didn't know people cared that much about the Mac. No, for sure. I mean, I think that that's, that's totally spot on, you know, like so there's, I'm sure a lot of comic book readers out there that may mock early image, right? Like you even said, it's like 14 year old boy or whatever in the back yeah. of the video mouth. Okay. I I don't feel that way. Like I, I I discovered Image a little bit later. You know, like when Image launched, I think I was like almost six years old. So I was young, right? I didn't get a into it. A little bit older than beginning. you, but I, I got what you're saying. Yeah. So I didn't get into it right away. But I discovered them. I mean, they were in dollar bins, you know what I mean? Or 50 yeah. cent bins. And I picked up every title. Savage Dragon was my favorite. I loved Young Blood. People have their comments about Liefeld. I think he's a awesome creator and i think his passion for comic books well the energy of, of yeah, what he does exactly it's just very exciting and yeah. that's one thing that people need to know is like this is a complete love letter in my yeah. opinion to image comic books and those early career like you guys don't make fun of anything there's none of that stuff like it's taken very seriously and i think you guys knocked it out of the park like i don't know how else well like, thank you I don't want to, I also don't want to give too much away. I'm also trying to hold back in terms of like what you're getting in there. Cause I want people to pick up the PDF, go print yourself a copy. You know what yeah, I mean? Print I want, yourself I a copy. I can't emphasize that enough. I yeah. really can't. I mean, the idea of this is not for people to look at it and be like, oh, these guys, man, check out these geniuses. Yeah. We're not geniuses, bro. We're all in on the same level level playing field as far as i'm concerned some of us are a little bit farther down the road some of us have podcasts some of us don't some of us can draw some of us can write everybody can kind of do something with whatever aptitude they have from a lifetime of reading comic books i want people to continue to make fan comics what i want people to take away from this it's punk rock right i mean that's yep. kind of what what the thing is with image that i when image came out i was like 12 or 13 and like it would be very 
it would be like a very hipster thing for me to be like, I always thought that it was foolish for the hoi polloi. <laughs> I didn't, I was a kid. I wasn't critical of comics because the internet wasn't around yet. Yep. Like I, you didn't go to the comic shop to be like, this is for lesser beings. Like that wasn't in my head. I loved comic books. Like all mm -hmm. comics kind of meant something to me on some way or another. They didn't appeal to me as much. During that time, I was into Alan Davis. Uh, I was into really into Will Eisner because I was always into older things. And like, um, uh, like I said before, Valiant, you know, which mm -hmm. the art was always kind of like, outside of like Barry Windsor Smith, it was always just sort of like utilitarian. Um, but the energy of those comics, right? Like everybody should have a really good local comic shop guy through their life, like a good LCS guy. Even if you don't have them forever, you got them for a while. Mine was a guy named Doug Adams. And before he retired, one of the books that I was really into that I was getting, whenever it came out, it was like the book I was most excited about at the time was that Transformers versus G.I. Joe that Tom Scioli did, right? I still haven't been able to get it because it's out of print, but yeah, I know what you're talking about. Such a cool book. I was getting those as they came out. I got the free comic book day one you know, the first zero issue or whatever it was. And it's just like, I'm here for this. Mm -hmm. And the guy was, every time it would come in, he would say, hey, your uh, your terrible Transformers comic came in. That awful comic you like about the Transformers that you like so much, it's in. And it was like a joke, you know. Oh, but, okay. All right. But, well, he, he didn't like the book, but I mean, like, he wasn't actually calling me an idiot for liking it. <laughs> yeah. We were friends, you know, um, and still are. Hey, Doug, hope you see this. Um but what occurred to me and how I laid it down to him was it's like music. Jack Kirby is Chuck Berry, right? Tom Scioli is the Ramones. Like it's dumbed down a little bit. It's rougher around the edges, but it's got that energy, right? It's coming to you. It's like, you're listening to it on a boom box. Like, all that stuff about the quality that surrounds it, like that's for people who like, yes, right? Mm -hmm. That's for fans of prog rock, Pink Floyd. Like that's the, the highly technical uh, uh, wizardry. We're just three chords in the truth, right? And from that same spirit, that was what Image Grand Design was about, right? Because the image guys were like, we're just going to do it. Try and stop us. We're going to make a lot of money. We're going to make our move. We're going to own our stuff. And we're going to try to change the paradigm. If that doesn't get you fired up, I don't know. Oh, what oh dude. I mean, they, they basically did a big fuck you to the industry. Yeah. And look what they, look. I mean, their image is still going strong. What they completely changed the face of the comic book industry, the way people looked at comic books. I mean, it's, and and now they're like what, still one of the premier publishers. Like they're what they publish is completely different. It's not a co. It's I wouldn't even say it was cohesive, but it's not like a connected universe really of characters. You know, Spawn even is in his own world. Right. Savage Dragons in his own world, kind of. You know, everybody's kind of separate. Jim Lee's left. Lightfield is you know off doing different stuff as well. But yeah, I mean, Image in and of itself, the story is exciting. Like. Yeah. If they made, they could make a movie about the beginning of Image, and I would be there to watch it on first day, opening day. You know what yeah, I mean? Like I, mean, I, I would see that. Yeah, at this point, and, I mean, it's just such a, a matter of, of an important historical thing that happened, and you know, Image now it just means creator owned. You know, they don't get they don't get cheated by the big two. You know, which are these big corporate entities. You know, what's yeah. funny too is that like our book is fan fiction. But you know what else is fan fiction? Everything that Marvel and DC put out today on this yep. Wednesday. In fact, our book is less fan fiction than they are because how many people have written and drawn Spider-Man since Steve Ditko and Stan Lee? Yeah. You know? I mean, pretty much anybody past the initial creators is fan fiction because they were fans of the stuff and then yeah. they went and created. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's... Corporate it's all. level, these characters can never be seen doing this or that. You can't kill this guy off right now because we need him for something else, but kill him off when it's time to boost sales. Like, it's such a cynical 
And I'm not saying nothing good comes out of there. It does. And only yeah. I seem to buy, only we buy it, it seems. And then it sinks like a stone when they, when they do risky things. Dude, but at least I, they try here and there. So I'm not going to like totally cade on. Dude, uh, you're so yeah. spot on with that. That's exactly how I feel. You know, like the yeah. older I get, the less I, the less, you know, I, I mean, obviously most of us grew up with superheroes. So that's how we got into comic books. You know, like, I, don't know, I mean, it's not like you get into comics reading a Chris Ware book, right? I mean, <laughs> that's not how it's going to go down. I but. would almost argue that, like, whenever I talk to somebody who, and this might sound snobby, I'll try to cushion it. Like, if somebody who has never read comics before reads Watchmen and they like it, that's cool. But there's so much of Watchmen that's inside baseball, you know? Like, mm -hmm. Watchmen is largely a work of satire. And yeah. it's about comics. It's about sort of a lot of the tropes in comics. And there's a level to that you'll never get if you haven't spent your whole life. I mean, that almost sounds like, you know, in terms of talking about like disposable culture, that's almost like saying, unless you've eaten Chef Boyardee ravioli every week, you'll never be able to appreciate this new product, you know? But it's like, yeah. that's really kind of how it is. It's like- I mean, you, it's true. And there's a lot of that in, in uh, image grand design. Like there's a lot of places where like there's swipes of art mm -hmm. and it's always like just the ballsiest swipe ever. Like there's parts where like Rick takes like, you know, Spider-Man 50, <laughs> like yep. a comic that everybody who loves comics has seen. And it's just like, yeah, I'm just gonna swipe that. You know, it's Shadowhawk now, you know? <laughs> and I mean, like when he was doing those pages, I was just like, this is art on a level that's, 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 you know, you, you, you kind of have to get the joke to get it, but it's just like, you appreciate that much more. That yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 No, I mean, I'm thrilled that I got to work with these guys and it's so smart. There's so many things in this, uh, that are, are really good jokes. Ben Granoff has a lot of really funny stuff in it. Ben also deserves credit for the chunks of the book in the middle where it's like an issue of of savage dragon or a young blood or a whatever comic and it's that image grand design or it's that grand design rather style of like what some people um call wikipedia comics is sort of a backhanded compliment or <laughs> uh yeah. we call those thanks to ben book reports it's like okay who's doing the shadow hawk book report mm -hmm. and then that person would go and and, and do that and then collaborate as needed. You know, One of the big ideas that I had was that the covers for those should be done by different artists than the person who did the interiors but because I felt like it was good to get a lot of different people in the book and also make sure that throughout it, it reads like a collage. It was important to me. Um, one of the big things that I hope somebody prints, I want somebody to print those individually. I would like somebody to make individual comics of those those book report sections. Uh, I, would, I would just love that if that happened. That's dope. That's a good idea. Yeah. That's <laughs> um, what I want to see happen. I want to see people take this and fool with it. I don't want it to be like a collector's item, like, oh, I have to have the thing. It's like, you know, my big thing was there was a lot of people who didn't get to work on the book that wanted to. I had to tell a lot of people no from outside the circle, simply because they just heard about it too late. And I would get texts and, and stuff from people like, hey, I'm so excited for this. I want to do it. And it's like, I'm sorry, we already, everything's assigned and we're all, the only way that people kind of got in from there would be with people inevitably, some people didn't come through with what they needed to do or, or what they'd signed up for and no need to get lost in those weeds. But what I hope happens is that people keep doing this. Like to me, the new idea of what an image means in the 21st century is this, right? It doesn't mean rock star creators. It means we can all be heroes. We're all rock stars. We all have the ability to make comics. And like right now, I'm not sure when you'll release this, but like right now, as of this week, the Image Grand Design public group on Facebook is about what's the next comic? Sign up. Yep. Make it. There's a deadline. Get it done. This doesn't have a whole plot where everybody's work depends on everybody else's. So the bus is going to leave when the stuff is due and here's your chance. Like, I don't want this to be about putting other people on a pedestal in the community. We're all the same people. Like, it's like, we're all, we're all in this together. 
So as much as I'm very proud of Image Grand Design and I'm proud of everybody that worked on it and there's a lot of great work and, and it's really great for people to be excited about it. The, the message that I have is just keep making this stuff, make more comics. You know, there's no reason not to. There's nothing yeah. stopping you. Whatever you think is in your way, it's not. Like just find a friend who can do something similar. Uh, if you missed out on Image Grand Design, make your own image grand design. If you didn't get one of the very few copies of the book that we made for ourselves primarily, print one yourself. If you don't have a way to do that, make a friend who does. This is a community. Like there's no reason not to. Comic book yeah. people are usually not known as being particularly outgoing individuals, right? <laughs> like it's <laughs> like that's, that's not something that you sort of think of with us. We're in a new day. These are sort of a new type of comic fan in a lot of ways. This almost sounds like I'm talking about a cult at this point. I don't mean for it to, but like we're at a point now where it's like, you're in this scene, like just go ahead and just like post something in that group and see what happens, you know? Yeah, dude. And you know, what's funny is, is in that group, it's funny because like I, people hate Facebook and I get it, but I always say that social media, if you have a problem with social media, the problem isn't social media, it's your friends because you don't like what they're posting. The content of social media is created by the people that you engage with. Yep. Uh, and I don't look at my feed that much, to be honest. Like, I don't care what my racist cousins are talking about. <laughs> not really part of my thing. I look at my groups. You know, I, I have groups that I run myself. And I look at uh, Cartoon Escape Bay Bring Side Seeds. And the interesting thing about it is, is that, I mean, it's not all lollipops and roses. There's times where it's like there's trolls. There's times where people are jerks, whatever. But usually things kind of get talked out. Like you sort of talk it through. This person has this opinion, this person might have a conflicting opinion. And then you, there's like a, a forum almost there. Mm -hmm. and no, that, I mean, part of that I is Eli because he's the guy who sort of is, is the host of that party, right? Like, and then going back to the book, like Eli was always the guy like, no, we're gonna put it out. And it's like, <clears throat> but what about, uh, you know, phone calls from lawyers <laughs> yeah. you know what about what about all the things that go wrong and he was always like no we're this is a righteous cause and we're gonna i'm gonna put it out like it's gonna come out yeah i know eli's eli's yeah. amazing dude he really is he does he does amazing stuff he, he, him too like his his love of comic books is is awesome and his passion for comic books is like yeah it knows no bounds and i'm so glad that he and, and he's got other stuff. I, I know there's other stuff that's in the works, man. You know, like I'm going to have him on the channel too. I, I mean, like, and I think one of the main things that I think people need to know is that nobody's making money off this project. No. It's not about making money. It's not about profiting. Every penny that comes from this, from the PDFs you guys buy, or if you were lucky enough to snag a physical copy, is going to the Hero Initiative. Or it went to the cost of printing the books. That's right. Uh, I think that that's an amazing Thing that you guys are doing um can you talk a little bit about like when you guys decided like okay we're gonna release yeah it? well i mean it was <laughs> it was sort of force of will on my part because the hero initiative to me is a tremendous i mean it's it's like you know i mean like you think about like the guy that i always go back to is bill mantlow who was the creator of a lot of great hulk comic books he created uh, rocket raccoon uh, he was in a, some sort of a rollerblading accident, which pretty much puts a firm date on about when that had to have happened. Mm -hmm. People were rollerblading. <laughs> yeah. And he's not, he's not in very good shape these days. And, you know, Marvel took off. You know, I mean, they didn't, they do nothing to help Bill Mantlo as far as I'm aware. Um, you know, Hollywood, every time James Gunn posts anything about his movies or his comic movies on Twitter or whatever, I always post, what have you done for Bill Mantlo today? <laughs> yeah. Right. I it's mean, like somebody needs to just like scrape off a million dollars that they'll never know they lost and give it to Bill Mantlo. And hero initiative is all about helping comic creators who uh, were left in dire straits after giving their lives to the industry. Mm -hmm. And to me, I always loved the sort of the Robin Hood aspect of using the creations of the only guys who ever got rich making comics 
to give money to the people that were poorest as a result of it. Like that was always my thing. So like whenever a conversation would come up about like, because we always knew we we're going to give it to charity. And it was always sort of like, what should the charity be? And I would say, hero initiative. And it would be like, maybe somebody that's affected by COVID. I said, comic artists are created, or creators are all affected by COVID. So it was sure. always kind of a, it was like, there weren't a lot of things where I used like force of will to be like, that's what I think we should do and we're going to do it. But that was one of those things. The hero initiative to me was always the only uh, charity that made sense to, to give the donations to. And how has the response been? I mean, like I said, I, I told you, like, we got to call it our shop at, <laughs> at looking for image grand design. But what are the numbers so far? Like, how many, how much have you guys raised as of today? The day we're raising? as of the day, it's over a thousand dollars as a result of uh, the downloads. Um, it's it's been an interesting. I was talking to Eli about this the other day. It's been an interesting social experiment with with comic book comic book enthusiasts and this this whole thing because people want a book. I understand that. I get that too. I want a book too. I when I'm when I'm looking at a PDF or something, I get it. It's not a book, right? Yeah. We're into that collecting. We're into that that aesthetic of holding it, and flipping the page, and looking at the paper, and that's part of what's in our DNA. So I, I honestly do wish that more people had, had downloaded it by now uh, and paid the $5, but I get why they're kind of more about like figuring out a way to get the book, but it's good. I mean, when you think about the fact that like, what is this Spider-Man comic sell these days? Does it sell 10,000? <laughs> you know, yeah, like, yeah. those numbers aren't that hot. I, so it's like compared to that, yeah, it's, it's going pretty good, but it's like a fabled item right now. You know what I mean? Like it's, I don't know. It's very interesting to watch it. And I mean, like, there's so many people who like, I always say that that telephone game that kids play, it turns out you play that your whole life. You know, the game where you say something to the guy next to you and it goes around in the circle, they whisper each other's ear. When it gets mm -hmm. back to you, it's a totally different sentence. Yeah. Like you're lucky if people get even like a quarter of what it is that you're trying to get across. So I think there's people that think image put the book out themselves. I think there's there's a lot of different sort of yeah. interesting things that you, and that to me sort of indicates a certain level of success because that means enough people have talked about it that you get this mutant statement back, you know. But it's it's been it's been very exciting to see that people like the book and care about it. Um, you know, for me, you have to to understand what I contributed to the book. You have to read it, right? Right. And see that it makes sense, or at least it, we attempted to make it make sense. And you have to read my little note in the back. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, I kind of made peace of the fact that, like, it's not called uh, editor kayfabe, you know, or even yeah. writer kayfabe. So it's like I'm, I'm always sort of going to be in a position to uh, take a back seat to the artists and the, the, the people whose creations you can clearly see in the book. Yeah. And I'm fine with that. If, if their work shines, I helped make that happen, you know? So I'm, I'm very I'm very happy with the feedback that we've received so far. I was almost expecting more anger and bile in a way, you know? Like I was kind of like preparing for that. And there hasn't been a lot of that, which I guess I should be thankful for. Yeah, I mean, I have, well, I mean, I, I'm in the group. So, I mean, there's no negative feedback. I don't know where the negative feedback could come from. But I mean, like, well, you know, you got to Google yourself sometimes, you know, it's that sort of deal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you gotta I, go I, do... looking. I haven't anybody like just kind of put it right on the, the doorstep. Also. Yeah. I mean, yeah, there's always going to be people that fucking hate, but yeah. for the most that's part, that's word for it too. Yeah. Well, for the... you know, I mean, what I'm seeing, it's sort of like, we're now, how many days are we away from like it? We're now like, we're not even. 10 days from when the drop of the book was right and like my world with it is the image grand design group on facebook which i run that and curate that and that was sort of like the main promotional thing and that was where we made the book available and it was one per person because we didn't want any we don't want these showing up on ebay we want people to have the book and it says in there uh that it's not for resale like you, you're not even supposed to, it's, it's like a promotional item. Mm -hmm. And I wanted no more than about 400 people to be able to, to get that. 
because we couldn't promote it in a big way. Obviously, you know, it's not how it's going to work. So I feel like the people who were most excited about the book were able to, to get it, right? Which makes me happy. And it's funny because that scrambled eggs thing, right? <laughs> that was me. And here's the, the genesis of that. Paul McCartney, when he was writing the song yesterday, the tune came to him before the lyrics. And he wrote it down or he sung it to himself. It was, the lyrics were scrambled eggs. Oh, my darling, how I love your legs. And that was the working title, scrambled egg. There was a piece of music that scrambled eggs on it. Those were the words. I learned that when I was a kid and I thought it was cool. So everything I ever worked on that didn't have a name or that I couldn't call it by a name was called scrambled eggs. Like there's like a floppy disk out there someplace in the world that still has a sticker that says scrambled eggs with some of my earliest writings that I did on a Gateway 2000 put on the drive. <laughs> so it's that's that's a trip to see a bunch of people make all these like scrambled eggs jokes and it's like that was that was a one-man private joke for decades you know 20 30 years yeah <laughs> so now it's that, all in the group yeah totally wild but i wanted those people to not get spoiled and to not see too much of the book so that it was a surprise and i mean to be honest it is a really good book so i want people to be like oh my God, I knew this was going to be exciting, but like, I didn't know it was going to be this good. You know? I mean, like the nearest sort of competitor is that Kubra Skeber thing, that Marvel thing that uh, all those, those independent artists put out is the, the, the Marvel benefit issue and Marvel was, was bankrupt in 2000 or 99. Or and I mean, our book is better than that. Pound for pound. <laughs> you know, I mean, it is. It's, there's, it's a yeah. better book. Um, and that was also a conversation that we had. Like, I remember Eli and I having that talk at one point where it was like, you know, the, the problem with our book is that it is pretty good. Like Sam J. Royal is a pretty amazing artist. Chris Anderson is doing some pretty cool stuff. There's a lot of different things in this that are really cool. You know, I mean, like really great art, really cool ideas, really fun book. Like that's going to be a problem. <laughs> like it's, it's one thing if a fan comic comes out, it's terrible, you know? Because then the companies uh, who own the IP are just like, this is not a threat to us. <laughs> right. No, I mean, the art is phenomenal. The writing is great. I mean, just has that. Every... Find me a better image book with these characters. I don't think there is one, you know? I mean, some of these characters, we can't even, we couldn't even read a comic book from them lately. You know what I mean? Like, what's the last yeah, song? A lot of them. I think that that's exciting. I mean, like, just the sheer talent that everybody brought to the project was um it was just phenomenal it's it was awesome to see put together you guys did a great job um i'm like i said i'm really glad that i was able to secure some scrambled eggs but you know before before we get out of here you kind of touched upon uh the next project the next one you're gonna do can we talk a little bit about that or do you kind sure. of so keep it on okay cool uh, yeah, well, I mean, now it's like, you know, the, the cat's out of the bag, you know? Okay, I cool. mean, I, during the course of 2020, I would, a lot of my stress, everybody had stress. A lot of what was my stress was like, this is going to get shut down before we can get it out. You know, that was always something that really worried me. And it's a real stress test right now to see like, what happens? You know, we put it out, people know about it. Like, what comes back? Do 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 we get to, do we get any crazy letters in the mail? You know what happens with it. Mm -hmm. So the next thing that's going to come out is disaster. It's going to get dropped in a PDF form uh, on the 20th of May. Is what we're talking about now. And I think I don't see any reason that won't happen. So that's the next thing to come out for people. A lot of the things that happen on that public image grand design group was people like posting pictures of their book, pictures of themselves with their book comes in the mail, and it was maybe like two days before I started to feel funny about that because like. I never want to be the person that gets treated different because I did something like good or bad. I don't want that. I want to, we're all, I want to hang out and talk with you guys. That's, mm -hmm. we're all in the same group. So I always wanted there to be a pure anthology of, of stories for it. That was what disaster was, what I thought of it. And then it left my hands and it became something else. So I just want people to, to work on an image anthology. Just do an image character. 
do it, do a short story with any image characters you want. And we'll find a way to make it available to people. I'll put it that way, without making money on it. Like, I just want this to keep happening, right? Like, I want so to- I. Right, yeah. I mean, there's yeah. no reason not to. And it's, it's funny because we, I put up the sign-up sheet for it. And what's funny is, is like, people keep kind of coming to me, like, can I do a, can I do a comic with Spawn and Max meet and they go to the future? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> like, you don't have to, please don't feel like you have to ask me for permission. Like, we're going to just do it, you know, just make it. Like, the message is not like, put us on a pedestal for making this book. The, the message is make it, make your own stuff. Like, whatever you think is keeping you from doing it, it doesn't exist. Like, just make these things, you know? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, the next thing will be called Darkest Image. Um, it's, that's from a joke that a guy named Richard Rich made that's a, a fake ad that's in Image Grand Design, which was itself spawned from a fake ad that Michael Kemp drew that was in Wizard number one. So right. like sort of keeping that tradition alive, the next thing is Darkest Image and it's just wide open. There's a sign up sheet, it'll be open till May 31st. Uh, the deadline for those will be August 31st. And it's a palate cleanser for me because the stress of Image Grand Design was to make it cohesive and to make sure that every part worked with every other part. Darkest image isn't like that. If Spawn dies in a story, he doesn't have to be dead in the next story. The next story is that person's thing. Okay. So for me, it's like, you know, all I'm here to do is just collect the stories and then we'll put them out. Like, I'm not even an editor on this. I'm a, I'm a project manager. It's me and uh, Mark Darden are working on this. And we'll find yeah. a way to get it out. You know, I mean, it's just, just uh, even if it's just a PDF that gets circulated, it'll come out. I understand that you're working on that as well, right? You signed up? Uh, yeah, I mean, I wasn't sure what to do at first, but uh, yeah, I reached out to my buddy Dylan, who um, is a part of my channel. We do our weekly reads um, on the pod for our podcast. Uh, he finally responded, so I'm going to have him do the art. I also yeah. put that I'm down to do another story if anybody wants to collaborate on anything that I just... I just really want to be a part of it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I've never. Well, really and listen, like, you know I'm I mean? speaking so. from a lot of person. Like, I'm also speaking to myself when I talk about some of these things because I'm a person who really likes the sweet spot in life, right? Like, I'll kind of like live a place I shouldn't live for so long, stay in a relationship I shouldn't stay in because it's easy. Like, I'm very guilty of that. And I think that you find that when you challenge yourself, you're capable of things that you maybe didn't know that you could do. I, one of the, the, the nicest, actually the nicest thing anyone ever said to me, Doug Adams, that same guy, the comic shop guy, I lost a job. I ran the music department at a big bookstore for 12 years. Ridiculously long time to hold a job like that. But it was Rocco's Records. I ran it like I wanted to and they left me alone because I made money for it. And they fired all the music managers across the country. And I went into the shop uh, and I said, well, lost my job and he looked at me and he said i'm not he'll be fine i was like yeah really <laughs> you think so and he said yeah you'll be fine because you turn negatives into positives and i said yeah i guess i do tend to do that and he said you don't tend to do anything you don't do halfway things you turn negatives into positives you're going to be fine and it's like talk about taking something to heart you know mm -hmm. i mean like but anybody can, you know, it's just a matter, and it's not even about negatives, I guess, in this, this context, but it's just like, you can do it. Do you want the book? Somebody can print it for you. It might cost a little bit of money, but I'm sure you'll figure it out. You know, like there's no reason not to do these things with this community. Like you have an army behind you. Mm -hmm. I firmly believe that. That's an awesome, awesome, awesome way to, to, to end this dude. Like, I, I really, really enjoyed our chat and I cannot wait for the next project. And if you could really quick tell everybody where we can, where, well, I already have, but where they can get Image Grand Design, what, where the links are, where we can find you, want to follow you as well on social media and all the links will be dropped down below in the comments. 
absolutely. Yeah, imagegranddesign.com. That's where you can go to get Image Grand Design. You can also listen to all the podcasts of all the different creators. Go on Facebook. If you're not on Facebook anymore, get over yourself, make a fake account, get on Facebook, join the Image Grand Design Ringside Seats group. It's some of the most fun you'll ever have interacting with other people about comics. And if you're not careful, you might just make one. Nice. All right, man. Well, again, thank you for taking time to chat with me. And we're going to have to do this again after the next one drops so we can sure. debrief on that one as well. Absolutely. Thanks so much, Ryan. It's been very therapeutic. Yeah, dude. Thank you again.